The Shepherd of Hermas, Part 9, Parable 5 As I was fasting and seated on a certain mountain, and giving thanks to the Lord for all that he had done to me, I see the shepherd seated by me, and saying, Why have you come hither in the early morn? Because, sir, say I, I am keeping a station. What, saith he, is a station? I am fasting, sir, say I. And what, saith he, is this fast that you are fasting? As I was accustomed, sir, say I, so I fast. You know not, saith he, how to fast unto the Lord. Neither is this a fast, this unprofitable fast which you make unto him. Wherefore, sir, say I, sayest thou this? I tell thee, saith he, that this is not a fast, wherein you think to fast. But I will teach you what is a complete fast and acceptable to the Lord. Listen, saith he. God desires not such a vain fast, for by so fasting unto God you shall do nothing for righteousness. But fast thou unto God such a fast as this. Do no wickedness in thy life, and serve the Lord with a pure heart. Observe his commandments, and walk in his ordinances and let no evil desire rise up in thy heart, but believe God. Then, if thou shalt do these things, and fear him, and control thyself from every evil deed, thou shalt live unto God. And if thou do these things, thou shalt accomplish a great fast, and one acceptable to God. Hear the parable which I shall tell thee relating to fasting. A certain man had an estate, and many slaves, and a portion of his estate he planted as a vineyard, and choosing out a certain slave who was trusty and well-pleasing and held in honor, he called him to him, and says unto him, Take this vineyard which I have planted, and fence it till I come, but do nothing else to the vineyard. Now keep this my commandment, and thou shalt be free in my house. Then the master of the servant went away to travel abroad. When then he had gone away, the servant took and fenced the vineyard, and having finished the fencing of the vineyard, he noticed that the vineyard was full of weeds. So he reasoned within himself, saying, This command of my Lord I have carried out. I will next dig this vineyard, and it shall be neater when it is digged, and when it has no weeds it will yield more fruit, because not choked by the weeds. He took and digged the vineyard, and all the weeds that were in the vineyard he plucked up, and that vineyard became very neat and flourishing when it had no weeds to choke it. After a time the master of the servant and of the vineyard came, and he went into the vineyard. And seeing the vineyard fenced neatly and digged as well, and all the weeds plucked out, and the vines flourishing, he rejoiced exceedingly at what his servant had done. So he called his beloved son, who was his heir, and the friends who were his advisers, and told them what he had commanded his servant, and how much he had found done. And they rejoiced with the servant at the testimony which his master had borne to him. And he says to them, I promised this servant his freedom if he should keep the commandment which I commanded him, but he kept my commandment and did a good work besides to my vineyard, and pleased me greatly. For this work, therefore, which he has done, I desire to make him joint heir with my son, because when the good thought struck him, he did not neglect it, but fulfilled it. In this the son of the master agreed with him, that the servant should be made joint heir with the son. After some few days his master made a feast, and sent to him many dainties from the feast. But when the servant received the dainties sent to him by the master, he took what was sufficient for him, and distributed the rest to his fellow servants. And his fellow servants, when they received the dainties, rejoiced, and began to pray for him, that he might find greater favor with the master, because he had treated them so handsomely. All these things which had taken place his master heard, and again rejoiced greatly at his deed. So the master called together again his friends and his son, and announced to them the deed that he had done with regard to his dainties which he had received, and they still more approved of his resolve that his servant should be made joint heir with his son. 
I say, Sir, I understand not these parables, neither can I understand them unless thou explain them to me. I will explain everything to thee, says he, and will show thee whatever things I shall speak with thee. Keep the commandments of the Lord, and thou shalt be well pleasing to God, and shall be enrolled among the number of them that keep his commandments. But if you do any good thing out outside the commandment of God, you shall win for yourself more exceeding glory, and shall be more glorious in the sight of God than thou wouldst otherwise have been. If then, while thou keepest the commandments of God, if thou add these services likewise, thou shalt rejoice, if thou re observe them according to my commandment. I say to him, Sir, whatsoever thou commandest me, I will keep it, for I know that thou art with me. I will be with thee, saith he, because thou hast so great zeal for doing good. Yea, and I will be with all, saith he, whosoever have such zeal as this. The fasting, saith he, if the commandments of the Lord are kept, is very good. This then is the way that thou shalt keep this fast which thou art about to observe. First of all, keep thyself from every evil word and every evil desire, and purify thy heart from all the vanities of the world. If thou keep these things, this fast shall be perfect for thee. And thus shalt thou do. Having fulfilled what is written, on that day when thou fastest, thou shalt taste nothing but bread and water, and from thy meats, which thou wouldst have eaten, thou shalt reckon up the amount of that day's expenditure, which thou wouldst have incurred, and shall give it to a widow, or an orphan, or one in want. And so shalt thou humble thy soul, that he that hath received from thy humiliation may satisfy his own soul, and may pray for thee to the Lord. If then thou shalt so accomplish this fast as I have commanded thee, thy sacrifice shall be acceptable in the sight of God, and this fasting shall be recorded, and the service so performed is beautiful and joyous and acceptable to the Lord. These things thou shalt so observe, thou and thy children and thy whole household, and observing them thou shalt be blessed, yea, and all those who shall hear and observe them shall be blessed, and whatsoever things they shall ask of the Lord they shall receive. I entreated him earnestly that he would show me the parable of the estate, and of the master, and of the vineyard, and of the servant that fenced the vineyard, and of the fence, and of the weeds which were pl plucked up out of the vineyard, and of the son, and of the friends, the advisers. For I understood that all these things are a parable. But he answered and said unto me, Thou art exceedingly importunate in inquiries. Thou ought not, saith he, to make any inquiry at all, for if it be right that a thing be explained unto thee, it shall be explained. I say to him, Sir, whatever things thou showest unto me, and doth not explain, I shall have seen them in vain, and without understanding what they are. In like manner also, if thou speak parables to me, and interpret them not, I shall have heard a thing in vain from thee. But he again answered, and said unto me, Whosoever, saith he, is a servant of God, and hath his own Lord in his heart, asketh understanding of him, and receiveth it, and interpreteth every parable, and the words of the Lord which are spoken in parables are made known unto him. But as many as are sluggish and idle in intercession, these hesitate to ask of the Lord. But the Lord is abundant in compassion, and giveth to them that ask of him without ceasing. But thou, who hast been strengthened by the holy angel, and hast received from him such powers of intercession, and art not idle, wherefore dost thou not ask understanding of the Lord, and obtain it from him? I say to him, Sir, I that have thee with me have but need to ask thee, and inquire of thee, for thou showest me all things, and speakest with me. But if I had seen or heard them apart from thee, I should have asked of the Lord, that they might be shown unto me. I told thee just now, saith he, 
that thou art unscrupulous and importunate in inquiring for the interpretations of the parables. But since thou art so obstinate, I shall interpret to thee the parable of the estate and all the accompaniments thereof, that thou mayest make them known to all. Hear now, saith he, and understand them. The estate is this world, and the Lord of the estate is he that created all things, and set them in order, and endowed them with power. And the servant is the Son of God, and the vines are this people whom he himself planted. And the fences are the holy angels of the Lord, who keep together his people. And the weeds, which are plucked up from the vineyard, are the transgressions of the servants of God. And the dainties which he sent to him from the feast are the commandments which he gave to his people through his Son. And the friends and advisers are the holy angels which were first created. And the absence of the Master is the time which remaineth over until his coming. I say to him, Sir, great and marvellous are all things, and all things are glorious. Is it likely then, say I, that I could have understood them? Nay, nor can any other man, though he be full of understanding, apprehend them. Y yet again, sir, say I, explain to me what I am about to inquire of thee. Say on, he saith, if thou desirest anything. Wherefore, sir, say I, is the Son of God represented in the parable in the guise of a servant? Listen, said he, the Son of God is not represented in the guise of a servant, but is represented in great power and lordship. How, sir, say I, I comprehend not. Because, saith he, God planted the vineyard, that is, he created the people, and delivered them over to his Son. And the Son placed the angels in charge of them, to watch over them, and the Son himself cleansed their sins, by laboring much and enduring many toils, for no one can dig without toil or labor. Having himself then cleansed the sins of his people, he showed them the paths of life, giving them the law which he received from his Father. Thou seest, saith he, that he is himself Lord of the people, having received all power from the Father. But how that the Lord took his Son, and the glorious angels are as advisers concerning the inheritance of the servant, listen. The holy pre-existent Spirit, which created the whole creation, God made to dwell in flesh that he desired. This flesh, therefore, in which that holy Spirit dwelt, was subject unto the Spirit, walking holy, honorably in holiness and purity without any way defiling the Spirit. When then it had lived honorably in chastity, and had labored with the Spirit, and had cooperated with it in everything, behaving itself boldly and bravely, he chose it as a partner with the Holy Spirit. For the career of this flesh pleased the Lord, seeing that, as possessing the Holy Spirit, it was not defiled upon the earth. He therefore took the Son as adviser, and the glorious angels also, that this flesh too, having served the Spirit unblameably, might have some place of sojourn, and might not seem to have lost the reward for its service. For all flesh, which is found undefiled and unspotted, wherein the Holy Spirit dwelt, shall receive a reward. Now thou hast the interpretation of this parable also. I was right glad, sir, say I, to hear this interpretation. Listen now, saith he, keep this thy flesh pure and undefiled, that the Spirit which dwelleth in it may bear witness to it, and thy flesh may be justified. See that it never enter into thine heart that this flesh of thine is perishable, and so thou abuse it in some defilement. For if thou defile thy flesh, thou shalt defile the Holy Spirit also. But if thou defile the flesh, thou shalt not live. But if, sir, say I, there has been any ignorance in times past, before these words were heard, how shall a man who has defiled his flesh be saved? For the former deeds of ignorance, saith he, God alone hath power to give healing, for all authority is his. But now keep thyself, and the Lord Almighty, who is full of compassion, will give healing for the, thy former deeds of ignorance, if henceforth thou defile not thy flesh, neither the spirit, for both share in common, and the one cannot be defiled without the other. Therefore keep both pure, 
and thou shalt live unto God. End of part nine.